engines are operated or run by a 40 horsepower Yamaha four-stroke engine. And the first thing we'll go over is how to lower the engine into the water. On the left-hand side of the motor, there's a black lever. These motors have a gas assist shock, so when the lever is pushed down, it locks it into place. To lift this shock off, you lift that lever. Now this motor can be put in any position. It can be put in a shallow drive position if we're going to run up through a lower water. But when you want it down the lake, you're going to want it in the run position, which is at the very lowest spot. And then you'll push that lever down and it'll lock it into place. Your gear shift is all on your handles. So you've got forward, neutral, and reverse right from one position. Your starter switch is on the key. Basically all you're going to have to do is turn it on. If first thing in the morning, it's a good idea to give the bulb a quick little shot of prime, and that'll make sure that the, the carburetors are primed. The kill switch is your red button. To get the motor started, make sure you're lined up with the red line on the handle, and all it's a matter of turning and your operation. The red button again, that's going to be your kill switch. All you have to do is push that red button off, and the motor will stop. Attached to that kill switch, is your tether cord. It's a good idea to wear a tether cord if you ever were to fall out of the boat. This will automatically pull off and then the motor will stop. If you do knock off this little key on the tether cord, the motor will not run anymore. So if you do have issues that the motor won't, won't start, always check to see that if your tether cord has come off. Moving over on this side, we have our depth finders. Um, basically the depth finders are all set up to work automatically. All you'd have to do is basically turn it on it's going to run through its startup and then it's going to automatically go to the settings that are necessary. Sometimes when you are running down the lake, you'll either get water or air underneath your transducer or the transducer might lift out of the water. It might mess up your depth finder a little bit, so what we recommend people to do is actually, once you stop, turn the depth finder off, turn it back on, it'll reset its, its settings. We've got two switches over here, which is for your bilge. It'll turn on the bilge and bail out any water that might have come into the boat. And you also have your aerator switch, which will fill up the live well up front. Now the aerator draws out of the back of the boat, so when you, <coughs> when you are running the boat down the lake, it's a good idea to turn the aerator off or else it'll run dry. Moving up front over here, we've got our live well. When the aerator switch is turned on, our live well will fill up with water here. There is a plug at the bottom of the live well so you can uh, allow the water to keep in and it will automatically overflow um, once the, air, the live well is reached its maximum. Over here again is our, our slot board. This is the board that we will use to measure the fish when you catch your walleyes in northern. Remember to lay the nose down on the left hand side and you'll have to squeeze the tail to give you the total length of the fish. Your walleyes are allowed to be under 18 and you're only allowed one over 18. Uh, on your license. Your best eaters are under 18 anyways, so but when you do measure the fish make sure you squeeze the tail and anything coming close to the line to the red you'll put back. The blue over here is for your northerns. Again you're allowed to have under the blue and only one over the blue. But again your best eaters are the ones that are going to be underneath the slot, so underneath 27 and a half for the for the northerns, underneath 18 for the walleyes. We also have life vests with the boat as well. Um, you have to have a life vest for each person um, when you are on the boat. Um, we do provide life vests. Um, you don't have to be wearing them, but they do have to be on the boat. If you do bring your own life vest with you, that's great. And we do recommend people wearing their life vest. Um, it is, uh, does save lives over the, if you do get tossed out of the boat. Now up front, we've got two storage compartments one on each side that you can access. So inside here we've got two paddles. That's part of the safety equipment that you have to have. We also have the batteries um, for the trolling motor. And then each boat will also have a spare tank of gas just in case that you did go out a little far or you were out for the whole day and you did run low. You've always got extra gas in the boat. Part of the safety equipment that is that you have to have with your boat is your safety kit. So inside our safety kit, we've got a flashlight, we've got a throwing rope, we also have a whistle in there, and then the, the canister itself can be used as a bailer. 
So those are the minimum safety things that you do have to have inside the boat. And please, when you are in the boat, make sure that everything is in the boat that you need. Your life vest, your paddles, your safety kit. Um, up front we have our bottom mounted trolling motor. Um, it is secured in place by a Velcro strap, so before you lower it, make sure you undo the Velcro strap. And then when you are done using it and your boats have changed spots, make sure you put the Velcro strap back on. There's a rope over here with a handle. This is going to release the mechanism to allow the motor to be put into the water. So basically you're going to give this a pull and up, and the motor is going to flip over and drop down into the water. Now over here you've got your foot control. This is what will allow you to steer the motor when you are trolling. On the left hand side of it, there's a switch. The switch is a momentary switch or continuous. So if you have it on momentary, that basically means every time that you do touch the button with your foot, the motor is going to start. If you have it on continuous, which is the opposite direction, meaning the motor will run continuously. You've got the speed control here that you can change the speed of it. And then obviously by having your foot on here, this will change the direction as you turn your foot forward and back. There is a transducer on the front of the on the trolling motor, and this bow mounted depth finder will only work once the, the trolling motor has been lowered into place. Again, this one is automatic as well as the other ones. Basically put it into place, turn it on, and it'll do all the settings for you. Each of the boats that we offer through Stanley's, you do have the option of taking insurance on the boat, uh, but it covers any um, accidents that might happen to the boat itself or to the motor. The 17 and a half footers, the insurance runs for $125 for the week, and there's no deductible on that, and that covers any incidents that you have. So it's up to you. Some folks feel comfortable that they know the lake or they're, they're, they feel safety that they can uh, get along by themselves. But other folks say, you know what, I won't let it ruin my trip, and if there is an accident, that uh, we're covered and we won't have to worry about any further.